A few years ago, an airline pilot took a flash picture out of the window of his private plane while flying from Minneapolis to Florida. And the flash of that bulb on his camera gave him an idea for a device that adds another safety element to aviation, commercial, military, and private. The airline pilot was Bill Atkins of Northwest Orient, who is here with me, and the idea he got is embodied in this model of an airliner. Now, Bill, I've told the folks how you got your idea for this invention, the relative danger or anti-collision light. Will you pick it up from there? Yes, Frank. Well, as you know, our airplanes standard are equipped with a red light on the left wing, a green light on the right wing, and a standard rotating red light on the tail. Mm -hmm. To this, we are adding the strobe white light with a directional coating to give us the relative danger and the banking attitude of the airplane. I see. Uh -huh. Well, now, uh, before we go any further, Bill, I'd like you to tell me of the uh, advantages of this light of yours from the standpoint of the pilot. Well, this chart here shows the closing time from the distance that you can see an airplane, the time that the pilot has to make a decision. In this sector across here, he has from 17 to 23 seconds. And we flash this white strobe light in this sector at 160 times per minute. In this sector off the wingtip, he has from 30 to 90 seconds to, to make his decision. And we flash the light in this zone at 80 times per minute. In the tail zone, the time runs from 90 seconds to 180 seconds for decision. And we flash the light at 40 times per minute so that the pilot has a relative indication of his closing time viewing the other airplane. These are carried over into the wingtip lights, showing that they are flashing together forward. Mm -hmm. And you can read the banking attitude. Is the airplane coming towards you? It should turn to the right. It is apparent at a great range. As the airplane would turn around, the light changes to the 80 flashing rate. I see. And as it continues on, if it were going away from you, why well, it would be at the 40 rate and you can read the banking attitude again. Now, tell us more about the light itself. It's a strobe light, I know, but uh, what are the advantages there? A strobe light is a condenser discharge like a photographer's flash, and it appears the same in operation as a uh, trolley wire flash or an electric welder, and it is very eye-catching and very distinctive, easy to distinguish against the city lights. I see. Well, most of the uh, serious collisions where there's been the greatest loss of life have occurred in the daytime. Now, I can see the advantage of this at night, but what about daylight flying? Well, that is one of the advantages of the white light, and uh, you're correct. There, I believe it's 72 to 90 percent of the near, near misses in the, are happening in broad daylight mm -hmm. under what we call visual flight rules conditions. And this light is visible about twice as far as you can see the airplane itself. In other words, it increases the distance that you can de describe a target about twice as many miles as you could actually see the airplane in daylight via far conditions. So it works, uh, you might say, as well or better in daylight than it does at night, huh? It doesn't work as well, but it is more important uh, that we get help at that time, yeah, yes. I see. Well, now, uh, how far did you say you can see this light? At night, uh, we visit visibilities normally around 35 to 50 miles, with occasional sightings as high as 70 and 90 miles. Mm -hmm. In the daytime, the visibility runs from uh, seven to around 15 miles. I see. And because of the nature of the flashes, there's no danger of confusing it with anything else. You know this is an airplane, yeah. and you can tell from the count of the, or the beat of the light, just his attitude toward you and, and what you should do about it. Well, now, what kind of reception has your invention been getting in the industry? Uh, let's say, uh, how is the Air Force taking it? Well, the Air Force has presently got a program for evaluation at ARDC, and so is the Navy. Uh, we have uh, lights going on or on Northwest Airlines, North Central Airlines. Boeing's put one on the 707 out in Seattle, and uh, Minneapolis Honeywell is putting one on their airplanes, as are a number of other executives. Do you need any particular approval, let's say Civil Aeronautics approval for this installation? The CAB has now authorized approval for this light under daylight conditions, and they are presently rewriting the regulations to incorporate the nighttime features. Good. I know you brought a model of your light along with you. I wonder if we can look at it and have well, you explain it to This is the model that goes on the wingtip of a DC-3, 
And, uh, it's the old workhorse of the airlines, isn't it? It's the old C-47, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this attaches on the underside of the wing as an attachment. It mm -hmm. can also be mounted in a vertical position and replace the wingtip cap on the airplane. Uh, we have a picture of how the light looks on the wingtip of an airliner. Now, here it is mounted on Minneapolis Honeywell's DC-3. Mm -hmm. How is the uh, government <coughs> reacting to the uh, practicability of your invention? The, uh, the pilot acceptance on it has been very good. The, this collision problem is, is uh, very important, and we realize its importance, and uh, we've been in very good reception from the CAA, mm -hmm. CAB, and the Air Force. We had an evaluation down at Wright Field just two weeks ago. Bill, you've been piloting for how long? Thirteen years. Thirteen years. Do many pilots come up with good ideas like this? Well, this wasn't entirely... Uh, we've had a lot of help from the pilots in the Minneapolis area we've, who have been working for with this for the last two years. But a lot of ideas that pilots get are eventually worked into a practical application because of their practical nature mm -hmm. on airplanes. Uh, a good many things are eventually incorporated in airplanes. Well, you fellows are working with them every day, and I'm sure you have many good ideas for safety. Uh, I can understand how this could be installed readily on a commercial plane, but uh, do military airplanes give you any problem because of their particular design? This happens to be a convenient capsule. Uh, it can be mounted flush into the wingtips or into the wingtip tanks mm -hmm. on high-speed jets. We have them uh, planned. Uh, here's one on a T-33. Uh, where it's mounted in the wingtip tanks, and you can see the fore and the side light, and the aft is on the other end of the tank. Mm -hmm. Well, very good, Bill. We're mighty proud of you and happy that you've come up with this uh, safety device, and we hope that it will contribute immeasurably to safety in our crowded air lanes, and I'll bet you know they're crowded, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Bill Atkins, <laughs> Northwest you, Orient Airlines pilot, and he's showing us his anti-collision light for airplanes. Brings us to uh, nine minutes before the hour and Betsy Palmer. Yes. And it's coffee break time.